Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including leaks from Tesla's RoboTaxi event, Smart Summon finally delivered, savings up to $8,000 off Tesla's extended through September, and more, so let's get into it. First up today, some Tesla software features coming soon. One of the best parts of owning a Tesla is receiving constant software updates that improve things and bring out new features, and they truly do happen all the time. Some customers are still waiting on things like YouTube Music, Amazon Music, parental controls, weather forecast and air quality, schedule charge and preconditioning, navigate to sub-destinations, and more to arrive on their cars with version 2024.26. However, for upcoming versions of Tesla software, there's even more. For the Tesla app, if you don't have a name for your vehicle in your account, your VIN will now show in notifications pertaining to that vehicle. That's a small update, but it is helpful for those customers with multiple cars that are not named. With the release of software version 2024.27.20 and FSD version 12.5.3, we are finally seeing the arrival of one long-awaited feature, Smart Summon. Summon has been missing entirely for a while now on all newly made Tesla vehicles when they got rid of ultrasonic sensors. This feature is fully improved and represents the next step in their autonomous driving system, and is the first for these Tesla Vision vehicles where a driver doesn't have to be inside the vehicle while it drives. Regarding the feature, Tesla says, quote, buckle up for the ride of your life, except surprise, you're not in the car. Actually, Smart Summon allows your vehicle to come to you or head to a spot that you choose all on its own. It's like magic, but with more tech and less wand waving. Additionally, Dumb Summon allows you to move your Tesla forward or back with simple controls directly in your mobile app. From the Tesla app, you can hit the new Summon tab, which will then open up a live feed of the cameras on your vehicle. Even when the vehicle is driving itself, you're still responsible for anything that happens, so you will have to monitor your car and be ready to let go of the control to stop it immediately if necessary. While summoning, there are two options for setting its destination. You can pick Come to Me, which will send the car to your current location, and Go to Target, which will drive the car towards a specific location. This feature is designed to only be used in parking lots and driveways, and Tesla reiterates that you need to be paying attention while the car is driving itself. This is also a feature that is only included in the full self-driving package. Since its very recent rollout, we've seen plenty of videos which show the software in action. This owner parked his Tesla at an outdoor shopping mall and then set up a bit of a tricky situation for the car. He stood on the edge of a large roundabout to the left of where the car would be entering the circle. This means that in order to reach his location properly, the car would have to turn right and go all the way around instead of turning left to reach him directly. The car very smoothly pulls out of its parking spot and enters the roundabout without any problem. It's very surreal to see the car completely drive itself with no one even in the vehicle. It's doubly impressive to see it have that situational awareness to handle the task so effectively, but it makes sense since this car has FSD. The car approaches his position and even pulls over with its hazard lights on to pick him up. In another video, the driver told his vehicle to approach his location from the other side of the parking lot. The car is able to quickly and effectively do a three-point turn before driving to his location. We can also see in the app what the interface looks like for this feature. From the driver's position, there is a large circle placed over the map, which shows how far you can summon the vehicle. It actually has a pretty wide area of operation, which means this could be useful in some pretty big parking lots. The car stops pretty quickly when you take your finger off the summon button, which you would have to if you had to intervene in order to prevent an accident. Finally, in one last video, the owner summoned his vehicle while sitting in the back seat of his car. This is especially surreal to see and gives us some insight into what riding in the future robotaxi might feel like. By all accounts, this actually smart summon feature is a huge improvement over the previous iteration. It handles many more driving scenarios and is effectively FSD, but without even needing to be in the car. This feature is essentially what hailing a robotaxi will look like, and seeing it working so well on these cars is very promising for this upcoming vehicle. This particular feature is still being rolled out staggered, and I have a hardware for Model 3 and I have not received it yet, but hopefully I will be receiving it soon. The expectation is those cars will likely receive it the earliest, followed by hardware 3 vehicles. Then I'll be curious to see a comparison of the old version and this new version, but it seems like it's likely going to be night and day. Definitely glad to see this feature finally arriving, especially since it's been an advertised part of the full self-driving package this entire time. As for the referral program, just a quick reminder that this has returned. Using someone's referral link will get you $1,000 off the purchase of a new Tesla, so it is absolutely worth waiting to buy until you track down a referral. In the past, you could use anybody's, but now the referral only works for the first 10 customers, so you may have to seek out a different code or you will see this screen. 
In any case, Tesla has now officially launched this program in Canada. Refers will get 650 Canadian dollars, and it gives customers a discount of 1300 Canadian dollars. Technically, that's slightly less than US dollars, but conversion rates are always fluctuating. Now many customers are waiting to see if Tesla similarly launches this program in Europe and China. As for the Cybertruck, a future feature we may see is stuck detection. Tesla's lead engineer was commenting on the fact that there are more cases of customers getting stuck in their Cybertruck. In response, he said, as they said, any truck may have been stuck in the same situation. No one is an expert the first time they drive off-road, but anyone can learn. Have been considering stuck detection to give drivers a pop-up suggestion when stuck with ideas on how to get unstuck. Air down tires, try using trail assist, raise ride height, try sand mode, etc. A feature like this is likely a little ways off, but it's always cool to see the ways that Tesla can take feedback and then improve things via software for customers who already have their cars. Next up today, the most anticipated event coming up for Tesla is their October 10th RoboTaxi reveal. Originally, this event was supposed to take place in August, but was pushed back. As we've come to expect behind the scenes from Tesla, they are likely working on crunch mode leading up to this event. We very much saw this happen with the Cybertruck unveil, where they gave us an unveil of that crazy car, but then it took them four years to bring it to market. The RoboTaxi, on the other hand, has some pretty big stipulations. The obvious one is that it relies fully on Tesla's full self-driving software being capable of delivering what this car could do. When Tesla sells a normal car and talks about its future self-driving capabilities, they can still ship a car since it functions as a great car with great self-driving that has to be monitored. The RoboTaxi, on the other hand, will have no steering wheel, no pedals, and no way for a passenger to take over. It's absolutely a vision of the future. We do expect it to happen, it's just a matter of how long it will take. In Tesla's mind, since they are revealing this car, it seems they expect to achieve this quite soon. In any case, this event is just over a month away, and a new report from Bloomberg is saying that Tesla plans to hold this event at Warner Brothers Studios in Burbank, California. If you are unfamiliar, this studio is a 110-acre lot with 29 sound stages that has hosted many famous productions over the years. Of course, most have expected that Tesla would hold future unveils at their new factory and headquarters in Texas, but this one seems a bit different. Back in 2016, Tesla used Universal Studios to unveil the solar roof, and Warner Brothers seems like the perfect place for Tesla not only to unveil the robotaxi, but fully demonstrate it in somewhat of a controlled environment. The speculation is that this is a perfect place for Tesla to demonstrate passengers being picked up in a suburban neighborhood and taken for a ride into town. The flip side is that it also allows Tesla time to extensively map this controlled area so that this demonstration goes particularly well. Tesla hacker at Green the Only has confirmed this. He posted on X saying, so I guess recent Bloomberg news piece explains why Tesla started extensive data collection in WB Studio area four or so days ago. This is in addition to other areas like Tesla Diner, various SF and Bay Area pieces, and so on. Tesla has been very clear that they are taking an approach where their neural network is capable of driving in any scenario. However, we definitely have found them optimizing certain areas that are being used a lot with FSD. A report earlier this year said that Tesla was optimizing full self-driving routes for Elon Musk and influencers who frequently post their findings from the system. On one hand, this seems deceptive, since Tesla's optimizing their system for those who are regularly posting about it, and thus regular customers may have a totally different experience. Also, Elon Musk is experiencing and talking about a very optimized version of this software. On the other hand, though, these influencers are regularly posting their findings online, and it can actually be a great feedback loop for the engineering team to solve these problems that are clearly on video. In any case, it looks like Tesla is doing the same approach for Warner Brothers, and it does make sense. In time, the idea is that the system would be just as optimized as they will demonstrate at Warner Brothers, but in any location. Not a Tesla app commented on what this data gathering means, saying, Tesla could be gathering or confirming data to build composite maps, including everything from stop signs, intersections, and construction, to bumps in the road to change suspension heights on the Model S, Model X, and Cybertruck for additional comfort. While pre-mapped data may be frowned upon by some, it could be the equivalent of someone driving on a familiar road instead of one they've never driven on. Confidence and safety levels are usually increased the more familiar you are with the area. The same holds for autonomous vehicles. The more information they have on upcoming intersections and road types, the better they can perform. Depending on what Tesla plans to do here as well, it's likely that their cars have never driven with FSD on the Warner Brothers backlot, whereas they have out on normal roads. So they could somewhat be starting from scratch as opposed to other areas. This is one angle that I think a lot of people haven't fully considered with Tesla's FSD and RoboTaxi launch. Yes, they are building a system that long-term should be able to drive places it has never been. 
But in the interim, in order to launch a successful product, they can absolutely start in geofenced areas. It seems that California will likely be the first market that the robotaxi launches in, and they could launch in these cities that they are actively collecting data in first. That ensures success, and then they can expand to other markets from there. That's the exact approach we've seen from Waymo, except their cars can only drive in these areas. Still, this is quite an interesting thing to hear, and I'm excited to hear more about this event as it nears. We don't have any information on who will be invited, but it's likely Tesla will randomly invite influencers, pick some shareholders, and allow some people to get tickets through their referral program. Hopefully I can get an invite because it will be the first Tesla event in a while in my home city. Next up today, one of the best deals that Tesla offers relates to financing. For many customers, they are financing the purchase of their vehicle. Right now, interest rates are quite high, and Tesla was offering rates at 6.29%. As a promotion though, they were offering 1.99% interest for the Model 3 and Y if you ordered before August 31st and took delivery before September 30th. For many, this deal doesn't look as exciting as Tesla dropping their price by a couple thousand dollars, but this can actually save you upwards of $5,000 over the course of your loan. So it's a very good deal if you were financing your Tesla purchase. It's now September, so we expected this deal to disappear entirely, but Tesla has simply removed the August 31st deadline. On their website, it says 1.99% APR financing is available for the Model Y and Model 3. This is something I somewhat suspected would happen, but it makes sense that they are pushing it to still be available through the rest of the quarter. The detail now is that you have to take delivery before September 30th. Things have changed a tad for the Model 3, where 72-month loan terms have increased to 2.99%. For 84 months, it's 3.99%. For the Model Y, 72-month loans are still 1.99%, and then 84 months jumps up to 3.99%. For some quick math, let's take a base Model Y. That car is $44,990 without any incentives. With estimated taxes and fees, it's $51,714 out the door in Los Angeles without a tax credit. Tesla assumes $3,999 down for that loan. If you don't qualify for the tax credit, that means you're looking at financing $47,715. For 72 months at normal 6.29% rates, that's $798 a month. Over 72 months, you're paying $57,456. Change that to 1.99% and your cost drops to $704 per month. $94 less per month, and thus, over the course of the loan, you are paying a full $6,768 less for your vehicle. That's nearly $7,000 off thanks to these promotional interest rates, so it really is something worth considering. If you qualify for the tax credit, your savings would still be around $5,616 in that case. Still substantial. If Tesla dropped prices by $5,600 today, you may be inclined to buy. So if you're financing, that's essentially what is still available through the end of September. Tesla has been doing a lot to lower prices over the years, but at the same time, interest rates have been rising. In practice, for many, that means that the monthly payment has stayed about the same. This, however, gives you the opportunity to truly take advantage of Tesla's lower prices, where you can get a rear-wheel drive long-range Model 3 with 363 miles of range for $42,490, and it qualifies for the $7,500 tax credit. The same is the case for the rear-wheel drive Model Y at $44,990. If you spec out a top-of-the-line performance Model Y with FSD, your cost out the door is $62,490. When financing that for 72 months, you'd save about $8,064 when utilizing this 1.99% APR promotion. Of course, part of this incentive is to drive sales of the soon-to-be-refreshed Model Y, but it could still make a lot of sense. The latest features are cool, but so is saving a lot of money. So there's still a decent amount of time to take advantage of this deal if you plan to do so. Tesla is running a ton of different incentives simultaneously right now. As Sawyer Merritt detailed, you can do a free FSD transfer if you take delivery before September 30th. When adding FSD to a Model X, you get the highest priced options automatically to help it qualify for the tax credit. For the Performance Model 3, they have a similar deal. Then there is a $1,000 discount for military members and spouses, and then a $1,000 discount when you use someone's referral link. As we usually see from Tesla, there's a lot going on through the end of the quarter, so I'm curious to see what things look like as we near October. Next up today, a new report from S&P Global Mobility is showing that Tesla continues to be the leader in brand loyalty, with a rate of 67.8% for the first half of 2024. Customer loyalty has remained relatively constant, and quote, Tesla has historically been a brand with strong, loyal ties among their consumer base, despite a limited product portfolio. Changes in BEV prioritization among other OEMs, along with Tesla's directive to cut pricing when needed, has kept households from defecting. 
even amidst the controversy surrounding Elon Musk and reports saying that it is turning off owners. Quote, the brand still remains the industry leader in brand loyalty by a healthy margin. Of course, it's likely Tesla has still seen some effects regarding sales, but it seems that once customers have the Tesla product, they want to stick around more than any other company. Quote, for comparison's sake, the industry brand loyalty average stands at 52.5% for H1 2024, and no other brand has a loyalty rate above 60%. This is very impressive to see, and anecdotally, I can imagine some of the reasons why. Tesla's supercharger network absolutely keeps you wanting a Tesla for the future. Rivian and Ford vehicles can use this network now, but Tesla also has you locked in on the software side of things. Tesla's software is optimized on a level that many other automakers do not have. If an ecosystem is important to you and you're used to the one in a Tesla, you likely don't wanna leave. Then when you get used to certain things like autopilot or a certain level of full self-driving, that keeps you in as well. I do imagine that long-term Tesla will have a lot of competition and we will see many people wanting to get a car like a Rivian R2 or R3 instead of a Tesla, but that car will not have Tesla's self-driving or Tesla's software. Time will tell as to what Tesla can achieve there, but I think that these are some of the biggest factors for customers. They also just have vastly more experience making electric vehicles than any other company. They are no longer the new expensive startup, and that can give customers a lot of confidence to stick with the brand in the future. That said, there have been many new customers over the last couple of years, and we won't see them upgrading or switching cars for another few years. So it will be very interesting to see how brand loyalty is affected in the years to come. Next up today, Tesla vehicles are known for being some of the safest in the industry across a number of metrics. For example, the Model Y is one of the few vehicles that was able to score a perfect five-star safety rating from NHTSA, and recent crash test ratings for the 2024 model from IAHS also received a near-perfect score. Teslas are some of the safest vehicles on the road, and we're constantly getting new data to support that. A study was recently released which compiles data on vehicle history reports from across the nation. Specifically, they looked into the rates for fatal injuries reported in car crashes and examined which brands had the lowest likelihood for that to occur. The data was pulled from NHTSA's Fatality and Injury Reporting System, which tracked car accident injuries across the US from 2017 to 2022. From there, they narrowed down the results to just focus on the instances where a car crash resulted in a fatal injury. From this data, they ranked all of the car brands based on the percentage of fatal injuries compared to total occupants involved in fatal crashes. In this study, Tesla came out as the third least likely brand to be involved in a fatal accident. Over that five-year span, 490 people were involved in a fatal accident in a Tesla vehicle. Of those 490, only 28.78%, or 141 people, were actually recorded as having sustained those fatal injuries. This means that when in a severe accident, occupants of a Tesla vehicle were much more likely to not sustain fatal injuries compared to others on the road. Like I said, Tesla came in third, placing behind Ram and Range Rover, with the former having a fatal injury rate of just 18.68%. Larger vehicles, like those from Ram and Range Rover, tend to be safer for their occupants, so this is very impressive to see from Tesla. While they're ranking third, we could also look at them ranking first for vehicles in their size. Overall, the data regularly shows that Tesla vehicles avoid getting in accidents very well, and that when you're in an accident in them, they are the safest cars to be in. It's one of the many benefits of a Tesla vehicle that many still are not fully aware of. That's all the latest Tesla news for today, so in the meantime, if you want to see details for the two new Model Ys coming next year, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.